In this video, our goal is to create a new Android Studio project and build out the functionality to allow users to sign into our application. So we'll create a new Android Studio project, select empty activity, and call it Instafire. Make sure the language you have picked is Kotlin. And then the minimum SDK, I usually go with API 21 because that's a good balance of being a modern enough API version, but also running on 85% of devices. So by default, Android Studio created an activity for us called main activity. But in reality, the first activity that the user should see if they haven't signed in is going to be a login screen. And so I want to create a new activity called login activity, and I want that to be the activity which the user initially sees. So let me switch into the Android view, and then inside of the package where we have main activity, create a new activity from the empty activity template. So you'll notice you have the option here of choosing between a login activity template or empty activity and choose empty activity because login activity template will give you a lot of extra code and complexity that we don't want to deal with. We'll call this activity login activity and then make sure you check this box for launcher activity because we want this login activity to be the first activity the user sees when the app starts up. Now we have the login activity Kotlin file along with the associated layout file activity login.xml. And this is what will be shown as soon as the app boots up. Now that we have this, we actually don't have a need for the main activity.kotlin, which came with the starter code. So I'm going to delete that. So the way I can do that is right click and just say delete. And then if you say safe delete, Android Studio will now warn you that there are still usages of main activity. And you can take a look at what these are. One usage is in the Android manifest and the other is in the activity main.xml. So I'll just go ahead and delete anyway. And then we have to delete the corresponding activity main XML file. And then also if we open up the Android manifest, you can see that the main activity was referenced here. So I'm going to delete that instance as well. So now the only activity we have is login activity. And because this is declared as um, an action main and action launcher, when the app starts up by default, it'll open up login activity. So now if we run the app, we should just see the empty screen from activity login. And there you can see that we, we see that. Our goal now is to build out the login form. And once we collect the user information, check with Firebase Authentication to sign them in. Going into the text tab, I'm going to swap out the constraint layout and instead make it a linear layout with a vertical orientation, just because that'll be simpler for us. This will be a really simple view. The first edit text will be for entering the email of the user, second will be for the password, and then third will be a button for the user attempting to log in. As you can see, this is really simple. Let me show you in the text representation of our layout. We added a layout margin of 16 dp on the linear layout just so that it's not flush against the edges of the screen. There's one edit text for the email, uh, one for the password, and the note here that the input type is password, and that will obscure what is being typed, which is what you want for a password edit text. And then finally, there's a login button at the bottom. So if we run the app now, we should see this UI. And I can start to type in some email address and then also some password. It shows up like that. And then of course, nothing happens when I tap on login. One quick thing I'd like to do here is open up the Android manifest file. And because we're talking to a server and trying to authenticate, we need to add the internet permission. Now we can go into login activity and reference these views that we put on the screen. So I'm going to have a click listener on the button login. And the first thing we'll do is grab the value of the email and password edit text. And same thing for the password. We'll save that into a variable. One thing we can do in terms of error checking is just make sure that there is a valid email and password in terms of length. So if the email is empty or is blank, which is a bit more robust, or the password is blank, then we want to tell the user that the email and password can't be empty. And then just return because there's no way we this will be correct. And if email and password are non empty, here's where we're going to connect with Firebase authentication. 
The way I recommend integrating with Firebase is to go up into the Android Studio menu, go into Tools, go to Firebase, and this will open up on the right side an assistant. And you can look at all the different options of Firebase that you could integrate into your app. We're going to integrate with three, Authentication, Storage, and Firestore. So for now, we're just concerned with authentication. So tap on Connect to Firebase. We'll follow the guide here. This will give you the option to create a new Firebase project or an existing one. I have a bunch of existing Firebase projects. You might not have any. So go ahead and tap on Create New Firebase Project. The region is the United States. And then tap on Connect to Firebase. So connecting your app to Firebase might take a few minutes because behind the scenes, Firebase is creating a brand new project for you in the cloud and associating your Android app with this specific package name to that project. The way you can verify this is if you open up the browser and go to console.firebase.google.com, you should now see a new project created called Instafire. And we'll come back and do some changes here in a bit. But for now, let's read more about what we did. We connected our app to Firebase. Now we want to actually add the library for Firebase authentication. And this is what will allow our user to sign in with email address and password. So tap on this button, and this is going to modify the build.gradle file for us, both the project level and the app level build.gradle file. So accept the changes, and then this will take some time to sync. And now that we have that, we can take a look at the sample code here to see how we could integrate that in our project. This is actually Java sample code, so we'll have to do some modifications, but it's not that different. Here, we need to get an instance of Firebase auth. I'll save this into a variable called auth. And this is the object on which we can check the user's credentials. So I'll call this method sign in with email and password. We'll pass in the strings that we have collected from the user. And one of the important concepts of Firebase is that these operations, whenever you're talking to a server or you're talking to a database, these operations are asynchronous. They might take an indeterminate amount of time. And so the way we program against these asynchronous operations is we make the call and then we ask to get notified when that task has succeeded. So we're going to call this method add on complete listener. And this will give us a task, which tells us the result of this operation. So this task is going to contain whether the email and password credentials were valid or invalid. So the first thing we'll check is if the task was successful. If it was successful, then we can navigate to the main part of our application. So we'll say success. And then I'm going to define a method here called go posts activity. So basically at this point, we want to navigate to a new activity called posts activity, which displays a list of all the posts in our application. And we'll build that out later. However, if the task which represents the result of this login attempt failed, then we'd like to understand why that happened. So we'll put a log statement here indicating sign in with email failed. And we'll also print out the exception. The exception is part of that result task. And it's non-null if the task failed. And the task would have failed if we're in this else block. And we can also tell the user with a toast. Okay, before we run this, we have to do some configuration in the Firebase project. So go back to your browser and go into authentication. This is the Instafire project. And we need to set up a sign-in method. So tap on this button, and we're going to enable the email and password sign-in. And you can see that there are a bunch of other options here, such as signing in with your phone number, Google, etc. For now, email password is probably the simplest. Now, in order to bootstrap our app, we need to add some users. So here's where we're going to create the fake users. So I'll add two. One for myself, which my email will be rahul at test.com. And my password will be password. I don't recommend keeping your password as password ever in a real application, but for testing purposes, this is okay. And one more test user we can make is Nathan at test.com. And again, the password will just be password. Okay, so now that we have these two test users, let's actually try out our application. So first thing I want to do is just tap on the login button with no text entered in for the username and password. And we should see this toast pop up saying that 
the email password can't be empty. And let's just see if that happens. And we see that down here, email password can't be empty. Great. So now let's try entering in Rahul at Tesla.com, so my email, with an invalid password. I'll just say one, two, three, four, five, six. So now you can see at the bottom, authentication failed. And if we open up LogCat, make sure you selected the right emulator that you're running on and the app. Print out info level logs. And we can see here, Firebase auth invalid credentials exception. The password is invalid or the user does not have a password. So this explains why the login failed as expected. One thing we should do is probably just make this an error level log because this is a failure case. But now if we enter in the right password, which is password, and now if I go down here and I press login, yeah, so now you can see, we see the log statement for go posts activity, which is what happens when the task is successful. This means that we have been authenticated properly. Now let's create the new posts activity. So I'll right click on the package. I'll go down to new activity and then go to empty activity. And we'll call this posts activity. And the way we'll navigate to this new activity is through the intent system on Android. So I'll create an intent here. The intent takes in two parameters, one which is this, which is the context. So the activity that we're in, which is the login activity, is an instance of the context. And the second parameter is our destination class. And that'll be posts activity. And now we'll call the method start activity with this intent that we just created. All right, let's run the app and see if we're actually properly navigating to the post activity on a successful login. Rahul at test.com and password. Great, so now we've navigated to this new empty activity called post activity. One oddity that you'll find here is if I go back, I go back into login activity. Typically, when you've logged into an application and you go back from that next screen, you shouldn't open up the login activity again. You should simply exit the app. So the way we can fix that is just by writing finish after we started the next activity. And this basically says we want to finish the current activity, the login activity, so it's no longer part of the back stack. Let's try it now. If we go back now, we exit the app, which is a better experience. There are two more issues that I wanna fix before we wrap up in this video. Before we fix those, let me drag out the Instafire app and put it on the phone home screen so it's easier to access. The first issue you'll notice is that it's possible to repeatedly tap on the login button, which will create multiple instances of the next activity, the post activity, while we're checking if the authentication is successful. So if I tap on that login button multiple times quickly, now you can see we're opening up the post activity at least four or five times for each time that we clicked. And if I click back, we're basically backing up through all the different post activities that have been created, which obviously isn't great. So to fix that, what we'll do is as soon as the button login is clicked, then we're going to disable it. And then once we get the result of our sign in with email and password, this asynchronous call, only then do we actually want to enable it again. Let's try that. So now you can see that even though I tried tapping on the login button multiple times, we only have one post activity in our back stack now. Finally, we can see the last bug by opening up the app and notice that we are landing on the login activity again. There's no concept here of a user session. We're making the user sign in every time they open up the app. Instead, the current signed in user should be persisted across app restarts. We should check if the user has signed in already. And if so, we don't need to show the login activity again. The way we'll do this is by checking if the user is signed in as soon as the activity is created. The way we'll do that is by bringing the authentication object out of the click listener and checking if auth.currentUser isn't null. If the current user isn't null, that means that Firebase has actually already stored the session inside the app and we can call our method go post activity. Let's try it. So you've already signed into the app. 
So now when we run it, we should no longer see the login activity and instead navigate directly to posts. And there you can see we are doing that properly. And if we go into Logcat, we should see the log statement for go post activity. The work we did in this video allowed the user to log into their account. In the next video, we're going to add some menu options so the user has the ability to log out of their account. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.